So this next exercise is just another example of using this contingency table, but we're also going to add in how that would map to a Venn diagram. So we could use either uh, to do the questions that come next. Um, I highly recommend you give it an attempt on your own, um, but I'll give you some opportunities to pause as we're working on it so that way you can test your skills in slightly more manageable chunks. So hopefully we've gotten to the point where we realize that our first step is to sort of just read through the questions, see what our events are, and then do some basic translation because it'll probably help us out in the long run. So looking through this question, the very last sentence tells us that we're looking at laptop or desktop in terms of what a student owns. And they've told us what letters to use as well. They've said, let's go ahead and use L for laptop and D for desktop. Hooray! And then we know that we can go through the entire question looking for those words and looking for our percentages. A study showed that 48% of college students have a laptop. And, okay, so there's nothing in that sentence but the probability of laptop. And 53% have desktop computers. Nothing here about having a laptop or not, so that's just desktop by itself. It, is, it was also found that 79% of college students have either a laptop or a desktop. So laptop or desktop. And then our final question tells us that the probability that we want to find, what is the probability that someone has both a laptop and a desktop? So we're looking for probability of L and D. Part of the reason for wanting this is that right now we don't have all the necessary pieces to fill in the contingency table. The contingency table needs us to have one of the ands, one of these four pieces, as well as one of our outsides, or two of our outsides. And right now, all we have are two marginals. We don't have an and, we have this or instead. Now, the or, unfortunately, there are some ways that we could try to figure out how the or works, uh, especially if you think about the Venn diagram version of or, we could sort of think about, like, or is everything in both circles, they just gave us this whole thing, and we want just the middle, and we could sort of brainstorm how we could do that, but there's another thing that can help us here. So, I want you to take a moment, if you haven't done this question already, pause the video and see if you can figure out how we're going to figure out what the hell AND is. So, a hint would have been to look at your formulas. We only have three really big given formulas. We have this one. In fact, we have these three. We have our OR formula, our AND formula, and our conditional formula. So, the first instinct would be to use the AND formula, because we're looking for an AND. However, the AND formula requires that we have a conditional, which we do not. Now again, one of the most common mistakes I would see on this question, if I put this question on an exam, was I would see students mistakenly use the formula for independent events and just multiply their L and their D together, which would be very, very wrong. Uh, we have nothing here to tell us that these two events are independent, so we have to use the general formula, and we don't have a conditional, so this formula is out. Well, one thing you might have thought is like, well, I can use the conditional formula to find it, but the conditional formula has an AND in it, so you just get stuck in an infinite loop going back and forth and never being able to do anything. So the only option is our OR formula, which works out well because we do have an OR. We have the two things by themselves. We're just missing the one piece. So if we did this in our two steps, the first step being to rewrite our formula with our actual event names that we're using, I always want to write a plus for some reason right there today. It's never happened to me before, but this, this semester. Um, so we rewrite our OR formula with L's and D's instead of A's and B's. And then we look and say, okay, well, let's replace what we have. We have the probability of L or D. That's 0.79. We have the probability of L, 0.48. Probability of D is 0.53. And this is what we're looking for. So now we're back to that hardest algebra question we see in statistics, which is we need to solve for x, and it looks very much like our residual question. We have 0.79 is equal to 1.01 minus x, so we'll subtract the 1.01. 
I don't trust myself this early in the morning to get this right, x is equal to 0.22, or negative x equal to negative 0.22, and then eventually 0.22. So now we have enough to fill in our contingency table. We have laptop by itself, the total for the laptops. We have desktop by itself, the total for the desktops. And we have laptop and desktop, that intersection. And remember, we know our total total is 1. And then we can fill in everything else. Everything has to sum down the rows and columns. So we can fill in those values. We can also fill in the values here. And then we've got everything. We can double check everything sums, works, we're good. Now, we want to use this to fill in our contingency table, um, fill in our Venn diagram. I'd like you guys to take a minute now, if you didn't do this question already, pause the video, see if you could correctly fill in the Venn diagram. So coming back, um, remember the Venn diagram only has the AND probabilities in it, nothing else. The most common mistake I see from students is to put this 0.48 for all the laptops in this section when really that is the probability of laptop and not desktop because we're not in the desktop circle. So 0.22 is laptop and desktop, right, our intersection. This is laptop but not in the desktop, so this is our 0.26. Here we have a desktop but no laptop, so 0.31. And don't forget that middle, uh, the, middle the last area, the fourth area on the outside, 21% uh, don't have a laptop or a desktop. Um, and a way to check that you did all this right is the should sum to 1. If they didn't, you did something wrong. So now we're going to use these two displays to answer uh, a couple questions. The questions I normally like to ask the most after you have a question like this. So here are the two questions. First one, given a student has a desktop, what is the probability they have a laptop? So we have a conditional probability. Like I said in class, this is something I test over and over and over again on the exam because it's the heart of our hypothesis testing. So this translates to given desktop, that goes behind the line, we know they have a desktop, what's the probability they have a laptop? And just like last question, we have two options for this. We can either use the formula, replacing the A's and B's with L's and D's, so our given becomes an AND, divided by what we know, and then we can just pull those pieces off the table. Here's where I would give you caution for using the Venn diagram. For the Venn diagram, here's the mistake students make. L and D, we got pretty well, 0.22. But for D, they make the same mistake they make when they fill it in. They go, oh cool, that's D, 0.31. But in reality, D is both of these things. So it's a lot easier to not make that mistake if you're using the table. Because in the table, we can see, oh crap, that 0.31 is desktop and no laptop. What we really want is that 0.53, right? Given they don't have a desktop, this section, what's the probability they have a laptop? So we need our 0.53, and then we just calculate that out to see what's happening. Looks like our answer is 0.4151. And then we have the same question we saw in the last example. Um, are these two events independent? Is there some relationship where somebody who has a desktop is more likely to have a laptop or vice versa or the opposite? Um, and then it says explain using probabilities. And this is exactly what you're going to see on the test. So again, you have your two options. Option one, use the independent rule. And this is where you would really get in trouble if you had used the independent rule to create your entire table. Um, option two, use your given conditional. If we know, if, if, if the additional knowledge doesn't tell us anything, if knowing they have a desktop isn't giving us any new information because they're not related, well this is just the probability of laptop. So and then you can plug into both of these and see. So LND is 0.22, our L by itself is 0.48 times 0.53, 0.48 times 0.53, we get 0.2544. Now this is closer to maybe there isn't a statistical relationship, but in terms of a mathematical relationship, there is one. These are not the same. So no 
not independent. And we could also do the same thing with our conditional. Does 0.1 of 4151 equal 0.48? No, it does not. Um, and again, here we actually have a little bit more information because we can say somebody who owns a desktop is actually less likely to own a laptop because than, than the general public, right? So there was a 48% chance. It goes down to a 42% chance when they have a desktop. So it's, it's less likely to own both devices, essentially. So same thing you would write here, no, not independent, using either of those justifications.